coming back to school with me We could have done it all so easily Hi, my name is Craig Thompson Wood. I'm the board game teacher. Thanks for coming to the classroom. As a teacher of the Peel District School Board, we are currently learning about this new document which has come out. It's called the Empowering Modern Learners. And the Empowering Modern Learners is a set of ideas that are not necessarily new ideas, but just put together in this way to really help to focus us on some of the principles and elements that we should be focusing on as teachers to help students the best we can. Now, it's going to be, this is going to be the first of a six-part series where I am looking at the six elements contained within here, which are the six elements of the Empowering Modern Learners, and discuss how gamification and board games can actually enhance and help with Empowering Modern Learners. Now, I'm not saying that board games have all the answers. I'm just saying they're a fantastic tool, which we really need to start thinking more about, especially if we want to be empowering our modern learners. So the Empowering Modern Learner program is divided into six elements, as I said, and they are as follows. Learning culture, informative assessment, access to technology, 21st century competencies, learning environments, and models of learning. As I said, I'm going to be taking some time to go through each of these uh, in more detail um, but I will do be doing each of those on a separate program for each one, so as to not overdo it all in one. So today we'll be looking at learning culture. The learning culture element is defined as follows. Learning cultures should foster curiosity, establish empathy amongst learners, and encourage lifelong learning. They promote a growth mindset, create safe spaces, and facilitate co-learning. These dynamic cultures encourage and facilitate opportunities for purposeful risk-taking and agency in the learning process while fostering a questioning disposition. The creation of sustainable learning culture requires a unified commitment from classrooms, schools, and the system as a whole. So what I thought I would do today is break that down and talk about each of those different elements in a little bit more detail and show how it might be incorporated within gamification or board game play in the classroom. So the first part, foster curiosity and establish empathy. Um, I think any time I bring a game out, honestly, there's instant curiosity for that. And I think that, you know, encouraging the questions, encouraging the desire to learn something new to see something and to be curious about it and to then to be, have that opportunity to ask the questions and to act upon it. And through the play of the game also, they start to see different possibilities and different ways that they might do things. And this is where uh, modern board gaming is getting really good now is to be making some more meaningful choices of things. So that way in replays of the game, it's not just simply roll a dice, move the piece, it's making meaningful decisions and then the whole questioning of what if I've done something differently? What if I do this the next time? Which helps to develop that curiosity. And even in playing a game today, the students were showing empathy to each other where they had opportunities to um, send players back spaces and things during the play of the game. And they wouldn't do that because they, they, they would feel bad about it or the other student was asking them not to. If you don't do this to me, I won't do this to you. Understanding people's feelings. I mean, when you're playing a game and everybody's committed and invested in the game, you're going to start to develop some of that empathy and, and really understand and feel, well, I don't like it when somebody does this to me, so I won't do this to you if you don't do it to me, which, in, which is, in and of itself, development of empathy. Lifelong learning. When I think about board games as lifelong learners, I think that's probably one of the best ways that I think of games because I know that from my childhood up until now, a lot of my education has uh, been enhanced through board games. I know that my teachers tried to do the best with me that they could, but it was only through playing board games that I really started to develop like my math skills. 
And so I think that other students, you know, as they go in through life, if they continue a, a desire and a love for board games, then they will continue to be lifelong learners as they play these different games. It encourages the reading, the maths, and everything that goes along with it. So it definitely fits into that category. Uh, for the growth mindset, I've already done a video on this channel about growth mindset and how board games are an excellent example of development of the growth mindset. So rather than me go on more about that, you can go and watch that video. Uh, safe spaces, you know, safe spaces for learning and co-learning. Uh, again, I think within the environment of a board game, it's where everybody's sitting together at a table you are seeing people, you're interacting with people, you're, you're seeing their expressions, their body language and everything. You, you start to um, feel connected with the people there. And it's, it's a fun environment and you know, it's, you play, you want to win for sure. But if you don't win, well, it's just a game. And I mean, people need to understand that. And so this whole idea of taking those chances and learning while you play and the worst that's going to happen is you're not going to win. No big deal. So the learning is very safe. And a lot of times the students will help each other out with something if they're trying to figure out um, a calculation for you know change of money or moving a piece or whatever. Sometimes students will help to provide answers. Uh, oftentimes I will discourage that to say let them figure it out. I want some people to figure it out too. But that opportunity for co-learning is definitely there too. Especially if you're going to be playing in a cooperative game, which I'll talk more about later. So facilitating opportunities for purposeful risk taking, again, this is the absolutely one of the, the key points of a, of a board game. The, you know, you're constantly taking risks in a board game and understanding the risks and evaluating the risks that you're taking and the risk versus reward. If I do this risk, will it benefit me? Maybe it will. So it's that whole risk reward thing that happens in board games. And it's just, it's, it's again, it's that more safe environment where you can take these risks and the worst that would happen is, okay, I didn't win. But if I had, if that had paid off, what could the rewards have been? I could have won. So, and students, you know, they tend to be pretty competitive with these things. So it's a fun way to take these purposeful risks and to learn from them through play. Creating a questioning disposition, I absolutely think that games can do that too. Again, as you're playing the game and wondering, well, what if I'd done this instead? Or, you know, you know some discussions happen afterwards, like, oh, you remember when you did this and I was going to do this? And it, it creates a whole, well, what if situation? What if I had done this? And, or, you know, how could I do better next time? And just learning from the game and you know maybe trying new strategies the next time but by in order to do that you have to question how you did the, the first time what were your strategies what worked what didn't work what were other people doing and and learning from the game itself and how to do better and the final thing i'd like to touch upon is the sustainable learning culture i think again that you know the board games can definitely fit within this idea of a sustainable learning culture, whether it's in the classroom, in a board game club, or even better, at home, where parents are making family game night a regular activity, then board games become something which becomes part of this learning culture where the students learn to love games, they play games on a regular basis, and they're learning from them, and it just becomes a regular part of their lives. And it's such a great family activity, too, to bring families close together. So that's going to be it for today's episode. If you have any questions about the Empowering Modern Learner document or any of the ideas that are contained within, if you have any thoughts on how you feel that games or board games might help with this particular idea of the Empowering Modern Learners, please leave me a message in the comment section below. If you want to join the community in the chat, uh, they have a thing on the back here, hashtag Peel21 uh, will get, is the, the Twitter link for d the discussion around this, plus the, the hashtag EML for Empowering Modern Learners. So please feel free to join the discussion either in my channel or on Twitter. Until next time, I'm Craig Thompson Wood, the board game teacher saying thanks for coming to the classroom. Coming back to school with